welcome to the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 10 from verse 5 all the way to verse 7. I take it again. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 from verse 5 to verse 7. Say, there is an evil which I have seen under the sun, as an error which proceeded from the ruler, for he is said and great dignity, and the rich look place. I have seen servant upon horses and prince walking as servant upon the May the Lord bless the reading in the name of Jesus.
And because our God is the victor, he has made us victorious. So everyone that is in him, regardless of whatever you go through, when you have come unto him, your victory is sure. In 1 John chapter 5, from verse 4 and 5, the Bible says, Whosoever that is born overcometh the world. Whosoever that is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world through our faith. Whosoever that is born of God. And if you go into the book of 1 John chapter 5, from verse 19, he said, I know, Jesus was not speaking, he said, I know that we are of God. And the whole world lieth in wickedness. The whole world lieth in wickedness. I am bringing you those scriptures so that as we begin, you will understand that the world itself which you live lieth in wickedness. The people that dwell in the surface of this earth lieth in wickedness. The people that walk upon the surface of this earth will stop at nothing to ensure that you walk under them. That is why you see that the rich don't want you to be rich. The reason is because they knew within themselves that at the time you get rich, all of you will be equal and there will be no one to serve another. And there is nothing that gives joy to the rich like when they see people paying them homage, giving them accolade, worshipping them. That is what the rich want. And that is why they do everything to ensure that you go down. But today, because you have engaged yourself in the patterns of our God, you are going to be victorious in the name of Jesus. The Bible says in Psalm 34, from verse 19, He said, Many are the affliction of the righteous, but the Lord God delivered them all. The Lord delivered how many? The Lord God delivered them all. So as long as you are in Him, you are delivered. It does not matter whether you are guilty or not. This time, Jesus is saying, even though you are guilty, even though what you are accused of is you are right, even though what you are accused of you are wrong, even though what they are saying about you, you did it actually, he said, but you are going to be delivered. He said, can the prey be taken from the captive? What is a prey? The dictionary explained to us that an animal that is being haunted an animal that is haunted is a prey. A man that is under the net of the wicked is a prey. A man that is under the mouth of a lion is a prey. But the Bible is ensuring and encouraging us that even though you are in the mouth of the wicked, even though you are under that and sentenced already to death, even though they have concluded your case, he said, can the prey be taken away? Then Jesus is telling you, say, yes, he said, they can be delivered. Because today the Lord has come to deliver you. It does not matter why, how. He said, your ways are not my way. Isaiah 55, from verse 8 and 9. He said, your ways are not my way, and your thoughts are not my thoughts. So I come to deliver you not because you deserve it. I come to deliver you not because you are not guilty. I come to deliver you not because what they are saying about you is not right, but because your ways are different from my way. I choose to bless whoever I want to bless. I choose to help whoever I want to help. Today, I see God, even in your unrighteousness, I see God releasing your blessings that you have been crying to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. I thought somebody was going to say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Today, I will be praying with my teaching so that we will pray. So don't expect me today to make noise. I don't know. Today I'm just going to take it gentle and then we'll go into prayer. Because there are destinies that need to be delivered. There are people that need to experience a dimension of God that is called prosperity. It is not just about holiness. There is a dimension of God that is also prosperous. And we must get into it and we must enter into it. Because it is the blessings of God in the life of people that attract people. When there is no blessing of God in your life, you call for no attention. It is the blessings of God that cause association. It is the blessings of God that gives respect. When there is no blessing of God in the life of people, you are rejected, rejected. And today, God is going to help somebody in the name of Jesus. When Jesus was anointed in Acts chapter 10, from verse 37 and 38, when he was anointed, 
with Holy Ghost and power. The Bible said he went about doing good, healing the sick, raising the dead. These were some of the reasons why Jesus was anointed. And for you to get a better explanation of why Jesus was anointed, you can go to the book of Matthew, chapter 9, from verse 1, all the way down end. The Bible explained to us in details about why Jesus was anointed. The Bible told us that when Jesus was still with his disciples walking around, the Bible said as they were going, he said he saw a paralyzed man and they brought to him and he had compassion on them. This is one of the reasons why he was anointed. The Bible said he had compassion on him. And because of the compassion that he had on him, the Bible said the man came back. And the Bible said why he was still preaching, why he was still with his disciples, why they were on their way going. The Bible said a centurion man, he said a honorable man, a man came to him and cried to him and said, my daughter is dead already. Yes, I know. My daughter is already dead. It's not sick. But yes, just come to my house. Lay your hand on my daughter and my daughter will come back alive. The Bible told us that because one man invited him, it was on his way going to this man's house that a woman with the issue of blood touches his garment because he was on his way. Somebody seated here today, I want you to understand that just through you in your family can be delivered. Just because you invite Jesus to your life, your family can be delivered. We heard of a story about a brother that just gave a testimony just now because he prayed. The Bible said, he told us, he said, when the, the, the test came and the, 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 the sister was confounding and positive of HIV, he went into the place of prayer. He prayed and cried to God. The sister was already deported back to Uganda and he told us that when he got back to Uganda, that the sister went again to do another test and the test came negative. The same country that sent him to send her back, back her, brought her back again. Because our God is involved. When God is involved in the life of a person, when God is involved in the life of a people, impossibility becomes possible. Because he's the God of perfection. Because he's the God that healed. Because he's the God that converted for a position for the good of his people. That is why you need to call on him any time. When a man invites God, it's not just you inviting him to your life alone, but you are inviting him for the sake of your generation. Because so many destinies are attached to you. Until you rise up, those people's destiny that are attached to you cannot rise. And that is why today, somebody, under the sound of my voice, you under the sound of my voice that has been suffering for any kind of reproach, that has been suffering for any kind of affliction. The Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord God delivered them all. Today, you are going to be set free so that that destiny that is attached to you, so that that person that is awaiting your manifestation, so that that family that is awaiting your manifestation will experience the joy of God. The problem with us believers today is that we do not understand our place of inheritance. We don't understand our place of inheritance. In the inheritance of God, we have been given. Because in the very beginning, the purpose of man creation was to have dominion. Dominion was one of the reasons why God created man. When God finished creating man, the Bible said he gave everything unto man. He said, have dominion over all things, not over some things, over all things. But man lost it in the garden of Eden to the devil. But when the second Adam, Jesus, came, the Bible said, through him, we got all that we lost. But man do not understand his place of inheritance. That is why you can see a man suffering and walking every year, month to month, year to year, nothing to write home about, but yet he cannot go back to God and say, Father, what is happening to my destiny? The Bible told us in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 10 from verse 5 to 7 what we just read. Solomon was telling of his story. Because any time you hear Solomon writing, Solomon is always writing based on his understanding of his experience. Solomon is writing about things that he has seen. Solomon is writing about the things he has experienced in life. And Solomon is telling us that under the face of this earth, he has seen a prince walking while a servant riding on horse. This is an error. How can a servant be riding on horse and a prince walking with barefoot? Because in the realm of the spirit, the destiny has been changed. And so many of us seated here today, we are supposed to be ruler leaders. Some of us seated here today, we are supposed to be driving. But some of us cannot even afford to buy a common bicycle because in the realm of the spirit, something has been done against you. And that thing that has been done to reduce you to what you are today, because Jesus has come to town. The Bible says when the centurion called Jesus, when he invited Jesus,
Jesus on his way, he said, people line up. A woman touched him, and the woman was made whole. He met with the man paralyzed. The Bible said the man was there. The Bible said on his way, why he got to the place of this child, the Bible said when he healed this child, as he was living, another person came to him, again with blindness. The Bible said that he had compassion with them, and then the blindness taken away. As he continued from there to another, he met people with leprosy. He met people with different kinds of diseases and affliction. The Bible told us towards the end of that verse. The Bible said when he went to the mountain, to the synagogue to pray, he said while he was preaching to the people, as he continued preaching to the people, he said they kept bringing people to him, different dimensions and kind of people to him. He said he healed them all of their sicknesses, of their afflictions, of whatever that was cast on them. The Bible said he took away all of them. Who gave him that authority? 
Where I come from, if that happened, that servant will be beheaded immediately. That servant will be killed immediately. But because the priest do not understand this place in destiny, because he never knew that he is supposed to be the one riding, and the one seated is supposed to be the one that is walking. That is why he is walking and that one is sitting. Today, Jehovah is going to open your eyes spiritually. No wonder the Bible told us in Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 18. Say, open my eyes of understanding. The reason why your eyes of understanding is supposed to be open is because you need to see from God. The Bible told us in John chapter 14, I think from verse 27. He said, my, my, he said, my servant, they hear my voice. He, as a servant, as a sonship of God, you are supposed to hear his voice. The purpose for hearing the voice of God is for direction. The purpose of hearing the voice of God is for you to know your place in destiny. Because when you are not hearing from God, the devil can speak to you. And when the devil speaks to you, he will be the Savior. But when you are hearing the voice of God, the plans and purpose of God can be given in true direction. No wonder the Bible told us that when you call on him, he will answer. Not only will he answer, but he will give you all the direction that you need. If God tells you that you are going to Canada, there is a different thing. Let us understand something about God. If God tell you that your destination is in Canada, God will not tell you how to get to Canada. He will only tell you that your destination is in Canada, but he will not tell you how to get to Canada. Because if God tell you, he will take a shortcut. The Bible told us in the book of Genesis 37, he said, Joseph already knew that he's going to be a vulnerable man. He's going to rule over his brothers. But if God has shown him that it's in the house of faith that you are going to be dishonorable, he would have bypassed his way and made a mistake. But the process, the plans of God will remain, the purpose of God will remain, but it cannot be changed. The only thing is that it can be delayed. Why? Because you might make a mistake because you are not hearing him. Because you are supposed to take through this process before you get to this place. You might take through this one because you are not hearing him. But when you are hearing him, he will be directing you from one step to another from one place to another until you get to your final destination. So when Joseph knew that he's going to be honorable, but how can he be honorable is what he could not understand. That is why he spoke to his brothers, but never knew to him that his brother were planned by God for his purpose and his plan upon his life to be made manifest. If the brothers of Joseph had not sold him, Joseph would have remained in his father's house and not become what God wanted to be born. But because they conspired against him and sold him, and the Bible said the moment he was sold, Joseph went again to another house. He became the ruler of everybody in that house as a guard. He became the higher guard among them. I don't know how they call the higher guard, the leader of the guard. That is what he became. If Joseph had compromised to that woman and slept with the woman, the highest thing Joseph would have achieved is to become a permanent guard in that house. And then they will be giving him food, giving him everything. But the plans of God will not come to pass. So that woman that actually came again and fought with Joseph and asked Joseph to sleep with Joseph is because God wanted that woman to make a way for Joseph to go to prison to meet a person that can connect him to a person that knows a person. Until you get to that person that can connect you to a person that knows a person, your destiny cannot change. If you go through all the Bible, you see that from one place to another, people met with people, someone met with another, until destinies were changed. How many can we call? Even in the land of Egypt, Moses was in the palace. Moses stayed in the palace. The reason why God planted Moses in the palace is because God wanted Moses to know everything. God wanted Moses to know the supremacy of man compared to God. So that when he would call him back to palace, Moses would understand that, yes, I have known your own power, but the one that I'm coming with is the superior power. That is why God planted him. And when the time comes for him to plant them, the Bible told us that the moment he went to pray, God brought him and showed him his people. These were the same people that he had been staying with. Why can't he save him? Why can't he save them that? Because God has not shown him. The plan of God remains. The purpose of God remains. But what you are going through is a process. So do not give up in life because you are not seeing what you become. Because you have not become what you want to. Because you have not achieved what you want to. What you are going through is a process. Yes, it's a plan of God. Yes, it's how God wanted. But the final destination is in the heart of God. And that God, which that final destination is with, cannot let you down. Because he has never let anyone down before. Today, under the sound of my voice, as you come today before him and cry to him, before the end of this month, many of you here which faith and connected, doors will be open to you. Miracles will be happening in your life. Things will begin to change in your life. In the name of Jesus. How can a prince be walking and a servant riding on horse? 
the horse that belongs to the father of the prince. It is an error. It's just like the, 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 the president traveled and just an ordinary person go to the seat of the president. Even the son of the president is not supposed to sit there, it's not his right. All right? It's not his right. There are protocols you must follow. If the president is not in town, the vice president has to take charge. If the vice president is not in town, the senate president has to take charge. It's something when one of these ones are not in town that the military is supposed to take over. That is the plans and protocols of human. That is how it is in God. If God wants you to become this, even though it's not happening, I told you last week that if you are supposed to pass through this door to get to your destiny and you mistakenly go through this way, God will remove this door and fix it so that you can fix it to your plans and hope. This is the ways of God. It does not matter whether you have not seen it. It does not matter whether the prophecy that was given to you is a lie or not. It's not a lie. It's because you are still going through a process. You are suffering today is a process. You are crying today is a process. You are here today is a process. You don't have food to eat today. It's a process of God. That has not defined your destiny. Do not allow anybody to decide your destiny for you by telling you that I can't think. I don't think that you can ever make it. They are not your God. Your life is in the hand of Jehovah. The one who has the capacity and the power to transform your life is Jehovah. And he has not spoken any negative against you. All he said is that your life will be prosperous. He said that we give to you what you ask of men. So all you need to do is invite Jesus today. When you invite him to your house, everything around you, not just you, but everybody around you, everything that they are looking for will be granted unto them. In the name of Jesus. In the book of 1 Kings, 2 Kings chapter 5. In 2 Kings chapter 5. From verse 1 all the way to verse 27, you don't need to read it, just write it. Because I have a few minutes ago. The Bible told us about a man, a honorable man. The Bible called him the captain of the army, the captain of the army of Syria. His name, name, man, name, man, N A A M A N. Name, man. The Bible said he was sick of lepers. The Bible said because he has fought for the people of Syria, the king honored him. Everybody looked at him as a honorable man. But there is something about him. There is a bot in his life. Even with all his riches, with all his powers and everything, there is a bot. And that bot is leprosy. The Bible says he carried this thing, but he was fighting and God was always winning battles for them. And he was honored in his hometown because of the battle that God was using him to win. And then came a time, the Bible said they went to the land of Israel. And he captured a young lady, brought the lady to his wife, and said, serve my wife. And when the lady began to serve the wife, the Bible told us that as the lady was serving in the house, he saw this man. And he said to one of them, and said, if only he can find my Lord, if only he can find my God, he said, this leprosy will be taken away. And the Bible said, the moment the servant heard it, the servant went to him and told him, and he went to the king. The Bible said when he went to the king and told the king, the king said, go with me to the land of Israel. I am going to write a letter to the king of Israel. And the Bible said when he was on his way to the land of Israel, he said the king wrote a letter and sent to the king of Israel. When the king of Israel carried the letter and he read it, the Bible said the king of Israel tore his cloth and began to cry and said, this man want to bring problem between the two of us. Am I God that kill and give life? Am I God that can restore a man? Why is he asking me to restore his son? Why is he asking me to restore his servant? And the Bible said he wept. The Bible told us that when Elisha heard about him, Elisha said, have you called to me and he come to me and he is not here? And the Bible said, the moment this was heard, someone went to him and told them and said, go now, quickly go to Elisha. And when he got to Elisha, the Bible said he sent his servant to Elisha. Elisha was in his home. The Bible said he sent to him. But Elisha did not come out. He said, go to the river. He said, go to the river Jordan. He said, wash yourself and you will be healed. And the Bible said the man was angry because he was expecting Elisha to go and lift up his hand and begin to pray for him. But simple instruction, if only you obey, say yes the Lord. And the Bible said, while he was angry and on his way going, the servant went to him and said, can you please listen to him? Just go there. If he has asked you for a bigger sacrifice, you do not have done it. Why not just go there and do it, whether or not it works? He changed nothing about you. And the Bible said the moment the man entered the water and came out, the left of his left hand. I don't know what is that thing in your life that is a bot in your life. Every other thing is beautiful, but there is a bot. Every other thing in your life are good, but there is a bot. When you are reading 
reading a note and you see a box, there is something that is about to be said that is contrary to what you are reading. I don't know who has read your life that has seen a box, but that box that is negative in your life, today God is changing it for your own in the name of Jesus. Anyone that has written you off, whatever that belongs to you that was stolen from you, whatever that belongs to you that the enemies are holding on to, I don't care to know whether the person who has done this to you is already dead. We knock on that grave today and we place a demand for your restoration in the name of Jesus. So many people we suffer because we lack understanding of our inheritance. In the altar of the wicked, they can just bring an ordinary display and call it your name. All they need to do is to name it after you on their altar and they place it on the altar. And when they begin to build this thing, they will call it Mr. A. As I build this, that is how your body will begin to pain you. And then you feel you wake up in the morning and you are having a pain. How can you explain somebody who was the nice HIV positive just within a short period of time went back home, did the same test, and the test came out negative? That is because there was something that is controlling in the realm of the spirit. I don't know whether he came to even testimony confirmation of what we have been taught today. Because you see within a short period of time, not because she has gone for any medical treatment, but we went back again to do the same test and it's no longer there. Because there is someone somewhere that doesn't want this same lady to be in the city. There is someone that is saying, why must it be you and your sister? And that person is saying, this person must come back. But because you entered into the place of prayer and the God of heaven that listened to his people, the God who knows the plan and patterns of people when they call to him, will not happen under my watch and he said come back and he brought him back because they do not understand that lady was spiritually injected with HIV and when she went there immediately because it was done already in the realm of the spirit and I always say that you should understand that the spiritual can control the physical so if you must excel on earth you must know how to capture the spirit if you must excel on earth you must know how to tap into the currency of the spirit if you must excel on earth you must know how to walk in the realm of the spirit Another way by which you can access the supernatural is hearing from God 
or hearing audible. John chapter 10, verse 27 to 28, Romans 8, 16, Isaiah 30, 35. John chapter 10, verse 27 to 28, Romans chapter 8, verse 16, Isaiah 30, 35. As God children, we have access to the voice of God. Access to the voice of God. The voice of God gives guidance. The voice of God gives direction. So as a children of God, you must hear him. You say, my sheep hear me. My sheep know me, I know them. If you are the sheep of God, the son's sheep of God, you are supposed to hear his voice. So if you are not hearing his voice, there is an error. You need to go to God and ask God why I cannot hear from you. So that you can hear from him clearly and then your life can be directed. The third thing is knowing the mystery in secret. Knowing the mystery in secret. Deuteronomy 29, 29. Mark chapter 4, verse 11, Daniel 2, 28. Deuteronomy 29, 29, Mark 4, 11, Daniel 2, 28. The secret things belong to God. Those that are revealed belong to his children. The secret things, the other day Jesus was speaking to his disciples and the disciples asked him, why do you always speak in parable? And he said the secret things are meant for them because they do not understand who they are. But you who are with me, he said, the things revealed to you are for you. So the things that are revealed to you are for direction and for correction. The things that are revealed to you is to guide you. So when you are children of God, the secret thing you have the ability and the capacity to tap into the realm, to know the secret thing. How do you know the secret thing? And what are those secret things? The Holy Ghost can take you back even into third, fourth generation and show you the things that have happened even before your father, father was born. The things that is holding your family, the Holy Ghost can journey with you and show you. He will take you to the future and show you what is to happen and how to go about it. These are the deep secret things about God. And as a children of God, you are supposed to see them. Sometimes, how do you see them? You may ask, I'm not a prophet. No, you are not supposed to be a prophet before you see it. Sometimes the Holy Ghost can show you in your dream. Sometimes he can show you why you are walking. Sometimes he can show you why you are talking. Even in your study, the Holy Ghost can show you. If you are not seeing any of this, then you need to go back to God and try to be because you must need to see and hear from Him. The fourth thing is performing in the supernatural. John 14, verse 12, Matthew 10, verse 8, Acts chapter 3, verse 6. Believers have the right to do great works than Jesus did, healing the sick, raising the dead, and performing miracles, all part of our inheritance. All of these are part of our inheritance. Jesus spoke to his disciples and said, greater things will you do. So the things that Jesus even did, you are supposed to do greater. As a believer, as a son of God, you are supposed to do greater. Tapping into the realm of the spirit, speaking into a sick person and the sickness of that person is healed. Speaking into somebody's life and things begin to work in that person's life is all part of our inheritance. Sometimes you do not need to call a pastor before you even pray for somebody. Only with your faith you can pray for somebody and that thing that the person is experiencing can be taken away. Why? Because you are a children of God. When you are a child of God, you have the capacity, you are expected to tap into this frame so that your life and the life of the people around you can be better. The last thing is power over evil forces. Power over evil forces. Luke chapter 10 verse 18 to 19. Mark chapter 16, verse 17 to 18. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 20 to 21. Colossians chapter 2, verse 15. Luke chapter 18, verse 19. Mark 16, 17 to 18. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 20 to 21. Colossians 2, verse 15. For Jesus conquered principalities and powers, demons, spirit, and he has given you this power, he said, I give all to you. I am not going with anyone. I am going to give you every of this power. He said, you shall see them. When they come against you, he said, when you rise up against them, they will go down. He said, even when you see them and they rise against you, do not be afraid. Do not be shaken because I have given you this power. In Luke chapter 10, that we just saw, the Bible told us, he said, he has given unto us power to tread upon serpents and scorpions. And if you go to the book of Matthew 18, verse 28, the Bible explained to us also how that he has given us all the power. The power to do impossible has been given to us. The moment Jesus was to leave, before he left, he promised us that there is something greater that I'm going to send to you. And that thing that I'm sending to you will direct to guide you. And that thing will help you. And it's called the 
the Holy Ghost. Through this Holy Ghost, you can still communicate with me. Even though I am not here physically, but through the Holy Ghost, you can communicate with me through the place of prayer. And through that place of prayer, you can command things and they will answer to you. And he said, you have power, dominion, over every evil forces. Today, anyone under the sound of my voice that is suffering for anything, that has brought you down, brought your family down, humiliated you, Today, Jehovah has given you power to tread upon them in the name of Jesus. Everything that troubles you tremble at the foot of Jesus. So bring whatever that troubles you today as we enter into prayer now to God in the name of Jesus. Can we rise up to our feet?